Nelly. Just enjoying that, really, worshiping with you this morning. Um, appreciate that. Isn't it good to in, and wonderful to be able to come in and just enjoy the ministry that someone else has? Um, that we, you, you know, those of us that don't play, we know we don't have it, but oh, how it ministers. As the praise team comes, um, they want to do the same thing. So I just, you know, that's our prayer uh, when we get together as a praise team that help us to be able to just minister and help others uh, to come to you, God. So I truly appreciate the music ministry around here, and we seem, to, and today it's different. You know, we seem to be changing it up every week, uh, but it's okay. You know, a new thing. I think God said sing a new song um, as we come before him, so it's okay. So good to see all of you. I really only have one announcement to, uh, to make, um, and that is, yeah, they're here, sis. They'll, they'll set with you eventually. They like you. I promise. They like you. <laughs> I know how that feels. When your grandkids come, you want them with you. I get it. Um, the, today's message, I'll actually reference last Sunday night's Light for the Journey. Um, and uh, so, it, you know, it's kind of cool. So if you, if you had chimed in and you were just, you know, there watching, um, you'll know what, exactly what we were talking about. If not, go back and watch it. You can always watch it later. Watch it at your own convenience. Um, but having said that, what I really wanted to announce is um, <clears throat> Tim's got some things going on this uh, to, to this evening and um, Rainy's gone so there'll be no light for the journey tonight okay and just want you to know that no light for the journey tonight um, and Tim God bless you you know do some things with your kids that's good They're, they've moved out and so when you get those opportunities you seize them and as a church we support that I'm glad you're here. It's good to see you sat with Grandma. She was waiting on you, buddy. You're a good man. You're a good man. Can I pray for you? Father, I, I just come to you in the name of God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. In this room is a group of people who love you, who are here to worship you and to give you honor. I have to confess, Lord, there are times when I come to worship when I feel so um, overwhelmed by the fact that I am human and I'm keenly aware of your grace. And I often wonder, Lord, what can I do that honors you? Well, to be truthful, Lord, even starting with just showing up, honors you. And then as we sing, just making a joyful noise, honors you. As we give, just bringing what we have to a God who has everything already. And yet you find it pleasing, and so it pleases us. Fe feast at your feet, in your word. To be with you and to hear from you, this is what we came for. So hear our prayer, O oh Lord, and all the people of God said, and amen.
Let's pray together. Father in heaven, I just come to you this morning. I ask um, in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and the Holy Spirit, Lord, that you hear our prayer. I pray, Father, for the congregation first. I always do. They, Lord, have cares and concerns, some, some anxieties. Others, Lord, are in a place in their life when it seems like um, they're, just, they're just on the mountaintop. But in all circumstances, we're here this morning. We're before your throne, seeking audience with you. Because in all things, we want to give you praise. We want to give you honor. We want to give you glory. And we bring our troubles and we bring our woes to you, O oh God. For you care for us like no other. And I pray, Father, that as you begin to meet the needs for these who are my very own, that they will see what it is that you're doing in their midst. They'll become in tune, Lord, with what uh, and how much you care for them. Sometimes, Lord, you work in ways, as we've just sung it, in ways we cannot see. But in reality, we begin to realize as time passes by, Lord, you were there all the time. Father, we pray this morning. We pray for our leadership. I know we do this every week, Lord. We want to be found faithful, praying for those who make decisions because our heart's desire is that your will would be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Start, Lord, with church leadership, but don't end there. They just make that the starting place, Lord. Most individuals here in leadership want what you want. In fact, I can't think of any that doesn't. It's our heart's desire to see righteousness bestowed upon our nation we pray this morning lord for our neighbors those ones that you call for us to love as we love ourselves we pray for leadership lord in our schools we ask that you lord would help the school board they are the leaders they're top and each one lord speak to them for the good of the children, speak to them. Give them wisdom that's not their own, that which we call this godly discernment. We pray, Lord, for our city leaders. I find it very frustrating, Lord, that they turn off any, any kind of, of narrative that they don't like. They try to control it. Lord, give them a heart for the people they serve. Help them to listen, both those who are pro what they're doing and those that are a con. 
Help them to figure it out. Give them discernment. Help them to do what you want done. We pray for our state leaders, Lord. There ever a time in our nation when people needed to pray, it's today. I see leaders who are so confused. We pray for not just our state, but our nation. Give us leaders, Lord, who aren't about themselves, but really all about the people. And most of all, all about you. Father, we pray for leaders in our world. We ask that you help them. Lord, you love this world. You love every soul in this world. Help. Help us, oh God. Father, I come to you. I want to say thank you that you would give your only son for us. Jesus, thank you for all that you've done for us. That which you've done so long ago and that which you do here and now. You never stop. You never stop working. Lord Jesus Christ, we want you to know that we love you. We'll never try to repay you because we couldn't. We already own that. But we do want to serve you. We want to let you know, Lord, that we're yours and you are ours. We want to please you. We want to put a smile on your face. Whatever that takes. In Jesus' name, we pray these things. And all the people said, amen and amen. Let's worship the Lord with tithes and offerings. Lord, we just ask that you bless both the gift and the giver. We ask, Lord, that um, you, you just find this uh, a delightful time. Lord, this is our heart unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'll give this a try. It's got 15%. I forgot to plug this thing in and charge it up last week. Normally, I, I make sure I do that as I leave the platform. Didn't do it. And so it was left on, and it's at 15%. So um, I'll give you the choice. I have the notes here, but if I get to 15%, it goes dead. You don't want me to just quit in the middle of things? I can do that if, if, if you like. Um, yeah. Let's see here. See if I can load it up now. It's been one of those mornings. We, we got up this morning to, to load um, some stuff on our presenter, which is what we sing with and 
it's not working at home. So we like, oh my goodness. And finally, about uh, about 15 minutes before we had to leave the house, I had seen an email where um, where the the Bible part of presenter charged us four dollars, and we had to pay an annual service for for this. This actually cost us about 160 dollars a year to to put words on our screens. Isn't it crazy? Um, and so I went on and I I, I went on the um, website and I tried to see what was going on with it and. We owed. It was due today. Uh, so, <laughs> so we got to church, and then I'm, I'm scrambling to get stuff on the way I needed to. So that's part of what it is going on today. But I appreciate your your patience and, um, um, and your love and just this is it. Right there it is. Open up. Um. Boy, this is slow. Go ahead and throw it up there, Tim. And I, while I'm waiting on this, um, <clears throat> title of today's message. Here we go. This is why I try to do this way in advance. Title of today's message is it starts with a heart, as if you need me to, to repeat it to you. But there it is. It starts with a heart. The key verse for today is, um, is found in Luke, the Gospel of Luke, uh, the eighth chapter, and the and the fifteenth verse, and it goes as this: as 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 for that, um, uh, as for that in the good soil, they they are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart, and bear fruit with patience. Father, I I've just read where we're going and 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 it's sure uh, to be a lot more developed than just this verse but i pray father that your word would permeate our minds and and go into our our hearts and that our hearts would be in such a place that it's good soil and that you help us to receive your word into our lives and produce fruit and to do it in patience in Jesus' name, I pray these things. Amen and amen. Well, there it is. It's, it's now loading. Wonderful. Um, last week in our uh, podcast, um, uh, Light for the Journey, there was some questions uh, posed to me. Re uh, I like it. Tim's always, a lot of times he'll put me on my toes and and make me think things through uh, even then. And so we talk mostly about what was preached in the morning. And sometimes if you get on, you know this is true. Um, sometimes um, you'll see that, that Tim actually has some points that I never preached that he wished that I had preached on and uh, covers it and does a good job. So I love, I love the fact that when he shows. But um, there's none, this, none tonight, but this is out of, part of it is out of what was said last week. Um, he had some good, uh, good questions and right questions. Um, in our podcast, in Life for the Journey, um, some of the questions regarding uh, last week's message as to whether or not the starting place was with the heart. Remember last week, I gave you the tools that were in our tool belt that God has given us, and I said the starting place is with the heart. And uh, I said uh, second would be the scriptures and getting in there. Um, I love it. I didn't start this message because of those questions last week, but when I, um, and you'll find out as I close that this message really came from some other things um, that God was showing me. But here we are. And I love it when God answers our questions. It's, it's a cool thing. It's a cool thing, Tim, when God answers the question, because your question, your question was an intelligent question, and it was a fair question to ask. And so, um, but, but God shows up. You know, when we are hungry for what God, had, what God wants to teach us, he always shows up. And so the, the, the question w was regarding whether the starting place really was the heart. The premise for that question was based on, on um, the fact that it is Jesus who changes the heart. 
And so you can begin to, to understand, okay, which comes first, the, you know, the chicken or the egg, so to speak, uh, you know, the horse or the cart, uh, which comes first. And so his question was very legitimate, I, and I didn't, I didn't dismiss him at all because I understood. Um, I couldn't give him this verse because the Holy Spirit didn't put that in my head, um, but, but the Holy Spirit has led this message, and I love it. Um, and so the premise for the question was based on it, the fact that it is Jesus who changes us from the inside out. And uh, it's he who gives us a right heart, which is true. Um, while there is truth that, that's, um, that Jesus does take our heart, and makes it right. It's got to do with righteousness, okay? He still needs to start with the heart. And we're going to see this as it plays out here. He still starts with the heart and the kind of soil of the heart. And so the thinking was, um, wouldn't the word come before the condition of the heart? And uh, according to Jesus, no. Okay, just how, how's that? You know, I'm going to pull out the big guns. According to the master, no. Um, that's not how it works. Um, just to refresh your, your memory, the points, and go ahead and throw them up there. I'm not going to read them all, Tim. Um, just to refresh our memory about what was preached last week, because I get it. Sometimes I can't remember. I have to stop and think about, what did I preach last week? Um, and so I was preaching last week, uh, Embrace the Gospel. And uh, you remember I talked about the, about the seven tools that we found in Scripture that God has, has, has placed into our lives that helps us to receive the gospel. And, uh, in, and I said, I made this statement, it all starts with the heart. And, um, and then we saw in, in the walk, to, in the road to Emmaus, the Scriptures and, and God's being present with us and dealing with history in the Bible and evidence and the witness and then, of course, you know, we were in Romans, and if you confess with your mouth, you know, he will, um, that you are a sinner, that he's sure and just to forgive us for of all of our wrongdoing. Well, I want us now to look at Jesus, at what Jesus himself said, and uh, we'll have our answer. Um, <clears throat> I want to particularly, uh, Tim and I have these up there, um, um, <clears throat> Uh, in starting with, I'm going to start with verse eight or verse four in chapter eight. And when the crowd was gathering, uh, and people from town after town came to him, he said in a parable, a sower went out to sow his seeds. And as he sowed, some fell along the path and was trampled underfoot and birds of the air devoured it. And some fell on the rock and uh, as it grew up, it, uh, it withered away because it had no moisture. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it. And some fell into good soil and grew and yielded a hundredfold. As he said these things, he called out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And when his disciples asked him, what did this parable mean? They got alone with him and he begins to explain to them. And here's what he says to them. Something kind of peculiar. I think when we get done here, it'll make more sense. And, um, and, and, he said, and he said, to you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God. But for others, they are in parables so that seeing they may not see and hearing they may not understand. Now, the parable is this, and Jesus gives us the answer to this question. The seed is the word of God. Okay? God is the sower, but the seed is the word of God. And the one along the path are those who have heard it. And then the birds of the air, he equates to the devil. Um, the kingdoms of the air. You've, you've heard it referred to Satan as, you know, in the kingdoms and principalities of the air. He, re, he equates them to the devil. And so um, the ones along the path are those who have heard, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from where? Their hearts. So that they may not 
believe and be saved. And the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy, but these have no root. They believe for a while, and in time of testing, fall away. And as for, um, well, as for, um, for what fell among the thorns, they are those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and the riches and pleasures of life. And their fruit does not mature. As for that in the good soil, they are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an, in an honest and good heart and bearing fruit with patience. I would share with you that it begins and ends in this explanation um, with verse 12 and verse 15. We find that it begins and, and, and ends with the condition of our heart as he explains the parable of the sower. Jesus said in verse 12, the, one, the ones along the path are those who have, have heard and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. As for what, uh, as for that in the good soil, they are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patience. It begins and ends with with the heart. I don't, you know, um, it, it's just it's just the truth of it. And yes, it is Jesus who makes our heart righteous. It's his blood that washes away our sins. And he brings us positionally into a right place with God and praise his name. And we will be, and that process, brothers and sisters, will be finished when we're sanctified and we're standing face to face with Jesus Christ himself. It will be finished and we will have arrived. But until then, God keeps changing us and working with us and developing us and making our hearts better and better or sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Can I get an amen? Do you understand? Yes, while Jesus changes the heart, it all starts with the condition of the heart. When God first, let me, let me try to explain this. Uh, when God first tries to reach us, he doesn't do, he doesn't try to reach us by taking this book and laying it out in front of you and saying, read it. And you read it and all of a sudden you're saved. That's not how it works. Can I get a witness? Is that how it worked with you? It sure isn't how it worked with me. Let me share with you that while I was still a sinner, God so loved me. Because God loves the world. Even in our sin, God still loves us. He's, he's trying to reach us. And so God doesn't start by, by just laying the Bible out in front of us and, and, and expecting us to all of a sudden be saved somehow. He does this through the things in our lives that we do understand. And then he tries to, um, that we, tries to relate himself to us through these things. You know, he, he, he told them in a parable. Why? Why did he do this? Because he was dealing with farmers. You had to go out, unless you were a physician, you had to go out, you know, or unless you were a potter or, one, you know, a, a furniture maker. You And even then, you still had to go and deal with farmers. Back then, they didn't have the U.S. dollar. So they would bring, the farmers would bring their their bushel of beans in and, and, and the carpenter would bring his chair in and you get him a you know you dickered with him and you give him a half a bushel for each chair that you need to set your family at the family table that's how they did things and so if God is going to reach us he's got to use uh, because he can't just he just can't 
talk about the things of God because we are broken. We are sinful. We are carnal. Um, I, I've been sharing with people at school about my letter that I wrote to, to and I share with them. I, I, say, I, want, I tell people, I, I put it to the people who listen to me. I'm always talking about it. The people who actually listen to me, I tell them about the letter, and I, and, I, and I have to do this really quick, okay? And it's been good for me because it's helped me to think the process through. And I, and I say to them, I say, when I, I start talking about how, how um, equity is about, you know, that, we, that we're in, in, inherently good. But Christianity is about the fact that we're inherently bad. We're broken. We're, 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 we're sinful. And so when we're born, we're born with the, um, the, the inability to care about somebody else. The only person that you and I, as we are born naturally, given to our natural state, is we are born to care about uno, number one. That's me. Jackie, there's nothing about me in my natural state without Jesus Christ is going to make me love you or care about you or even worry about you or even think about you for that matter, let alone appreciate you for all you do in the church. But when Jesus Christ comes along and he changes us, and he makes us different, he, we are born again, and he begins to shape the process. But before he can get us to that place, he's got to have the right, and we got to have the right condition soil, the right condition in our heart. And so God, the Holy Spirit, one of his jobs while we're yet sinners is to, con is to, to reveal himself to us in ways that we can understand because we are not spiritual be beings. Does that make sense? We're physical, natural beings. Oh, we still got a soul. We're eternal beings. But there's nothing godly about us. And so God is looking and, 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 and he's sowing seed in all the soil. Just looking for the person whose heart's ready. But how does he get our hearts ready? Through, through the natural evidence that God exists. Take for example... I have been to Pikes Peak. Actually, I've been to both. There's two Pikes Peaks in America. Did you know that? When I was young, I was in my teens. We went to California. We passed through Colorado. We stopped at Pikes Peak. It was breathtaking for a teenager even. It was like, whoa. And we're up there, and I'm looking down, and I'm looking over the vista, and I was impressed. Um, as a Christian and a pastor working in Iowa, we went to Pikes Peak. And I said, wait a minute, I've been to Pikes Peak. It's not in Iowa. Well, they said, well, let's fix that. We want to take you to Pikes Peak in Iowa. And I've been, a, how many of you been, it's just, you, you, you've been to Pikes Peak in Iowa, right? Ever been to one in Colorado too? Cool. And, and so, you know, you get to Pikes Peak in Iowa and it's like, wow. And you're there. Did you see eagles? I saw eagles all over the place. And, you know, and, and it's like, wow. And you, you look down, you can see, you can see the Mississippi, and, 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 and it's just something else to behold. And you get a sense of God's handiwork. Or here's something else while I was still a sinner. These all happened, you know, the Pikes Peak happened while I was still a sinner. Before I came to Christ, something else. My firstborn, my firstborn, James, I call him Jamie. It's on his birth certificate. I can call him Jamie still. Nobody calls him Jamie but me and, and mom once in a while. We wanted to name him Jamie, but we figured when he grew up, he, didn't want, he wouldn't want that name. And so we were right. We put in parentheses, Jamie, but it's James David Tenney. And so when Jamie was born, and I was still lost, and he drew, I was there when he drew his first breath. See, even now. And they count those ten fingers. And those ten toes and kissed his feet. 
I knew there was something bigger in life than what my eyes behold. You see, God loved me and he's trying to reach me and he speaks to me in parables that I just might see and perceive. Does that make sense? When I, when I, I used to read this and think, God, why do you speak to people in parables? But when you start, like, like Tim and I were doing, you start digesting the stuff with the questions, you start really digging in, you start understanding what God is up to. Romans says it well in the first chapter of Romans that man is without excuse. He's going to be held accountable because nature itself testifies. When I was first married, I wasn't a believer, and I'm, I'm off, and we went on a honeymoon, and we're up in the mountains, the Appalachians. I've been to the Rockies. I've been to the Appalachians, and they have obviously impacted me. And I'm walking, we're up there, remember that morning? And, and we're up in top of the mountain. We, we stayed overnight. Uh, it was a Saturday night and we're in a camper. You drive a camper, her dad loaned us. And we had waited a year to go on our honeymoon. And, and we, 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 <laughs> we were out of gas. And so I said to her, well, we'll stop in, up here at the top of the mountain and we're, we'll, we'll just wait. And we found a place there where you could pull over. And it was one of the places where one of the battles was set up, you know, for civil war. And we pulled over and we stayed the night. We ate hot dogs. That, that day we had gone on the Cassinique Railroad and it was one of those coal engines, you know. And we made the mistake of sitting in the open car right behind. I didn't know about cinders. We went to bed that night with our heads just caked with cinders. She still, you know, our honeymoon, she still looked pretty good, dirty and all. And we're up on that mountain and we get up and the clouds are all around. I mean, I'm walking in the clouds, baby. And you know, that there's something bigger going on here than meets the eye. And you get the sense that only God. You see, that's God revealing himself to us, trying to reach out to us in parables and in ways that, that gets our attention. And here in this story, he's talking to farmers and sowing seeds because he wants them to understand. And he says to them, and he tries to help them realize that being ever hearing but never, never understanding, being ever seeing but never um, uh, perceiving, and by the way, this isn't the only time Jesus has said this. It's not the only time he appears in the Bible. If you get into Revelations, you'll find that Jesus says the same thing in his letters to the church. He who has an ear, let, let him hear what the Spirit says. In those moments that you have this sense that God is real and his handed work is majestic, it's a time that you realize as a non-believer there is more to life than what meets the eye and you sense that there is a God that my friend was God reaching me in parables and I was ever seeing but never perceiving and ever hearing but never understanding it wasn't until the condition of my heart that I was right, that I would receive the word of God and it would begin to bear fruit. You see, God takes those moments and he begins to, to infiltrate and he plants the seed in there and, 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 and it leaves just a little bit of, if you, if you think of the seed like fertilizer, and it just starts to begin to make the, the soil of the heart right. And then someone else will come along and plant some more seeds and, and the heart begins to get a little bit more in a place where it's ready to listen to the word of God. It always starts with heart. But there is the reality that comes with all of this. Hear me, church. Hear me. That when this takes place, the world doesn't stop being the world.
The question was is as to why it starts with the condition of the heart, and it also speaks to some other issues. I want to look at these scriptures for the next couple minutes. We're almost done, by the way. I don't know what page I'm on. Uh, this doesn't give me the pages, but I, I know where we're at in the message. The, the condition of the heart. These are the things that, that show. Go ahead and throw that up there, Tim. Um, it starts with the heart. We're going to talk about the, um, that we hold on to the word, that we bear fruit, and we do it with patience. You see, the condition of the heart, you, it, hears the, it hears the word, but the good heart is what hears it and holds on. Um, and you hold on to the word with a good heart. And by the way, this is a warning. When we come to church and any time we hear God speaking, we need to pay attention to the word. We need to pay attention to what God is trying to say to us. But God is always trying to reach us. And I could, I could go through the different, uh, the, well, I'll, I'll just take a pause for a moment and, and just do that. There were the, the four kinds of soil, you know. There was the, the, the hard place on the path, one of the gospel writers put it, and the birds of the air come, and Satan snatches it up. You hear it, and, and, and you, you encounter people like this all the time. Their heart's not ready. The soil of their heart's not ready, but the starting place is with the heart. And so you sow the seeds of Christ, and they just, like, laugh at you, you know. What's interesting to me is that we have the secrets of life that they're searching for, but they're not ready to receive it in their heart. And then you have the ones who receive it, but when the heat of the day comes by, the roots are, you know, I mean, they, they, they accept it. And then the next week they're like, you know, off somewhere else and you don't ever see them again. And I've had people like that with me. They come to Christ, they make the confession, you, you lead them to Christ, they, and then the next thing you know, a week or two, they're gone. You know what that means? Somebody else has got to sow some more seed. Get that heart condition right. Because God isn't willing that any should perish. And then, you, you, you know, then you have the, the kind where the, the, the cares of life Probably pastors get more frustrated by this than anything else. You know, the cares of life. Um, you know, how do, how do I, in this economy, put food on the table and pay the utility bills? And so we go to work on Sunday instead of church. You know, not that you guys are doing that, but, but, but you understand what I'm saying. The cares of life. And it chokes it out. What's it mean? It means that God's got to, we need to sow some more seeds. God's got to do some more work. And then there are those that I term the faithful. You know, they have, their heart's just there and they're, they're receiving all that God's got for them and want more. That was good. More, please. Those are the, the four kinds of soil. And um, they hear it. And, but, but, but I would share with you that they hear it with a good heart. And, and it is a warning on how we come prepared to hear the word of God. Let's talk about bearing fruit for a moment. I want to share with you um, a follow-up of a story in a prayer concern that I gave you over a year ago. Remember last year, last summer, I'm in other schools and I'm working. Remember we had a, we had a gal, we, I asked you to pray for her. She was pregnant, considering an abortion. Okay. And I'm praying like I'd never prayed before for this baby. And God opened the door, and I had some God conversations as well as just regular conversations. I didn't, I didn't preach to her. I did ask her at one point, and, you know, but I earned the right with her. In fact, I was the one who, when she was sick, she was, she was working away, and she was dizzy and, and feeling nauseous. And she did that for a couple days. And on that Friday, I said to her, I said, hey, uh, is it a possibility that you're pregnant? It hadn't occurred to her. 
she said to me, well, I don't think so. She come back on Monday. Evidently, she took a test. She said, guess what? You're right. I'm pregnant. And the father wanted her to have an abortion. So she's working with me in my school. We get my school done, and then they assign her. See, this is God. They assign her to go with me to Falwell. One day, God says to me, we're working away. It's the morning. Of course, I'm praying for her. And God says to me, he says, tell her she's a good mother. I'm like, she doesn't. She's going to think I'm preaching at her, Lord. You know what I mean? We, we, you guys know what I'm talking about. You, and you think, well, she's going she's gonna, to, um, I forget I'm on camera. I'm sorry, Charlie. I'm walking around. Um, you know, and so, I, okay, Lord. And so I said to her, I said, you know, I uh, called her by name. I said, you know, hon, um, I just want you to know that you're already a good mom. I said, and the reason I know that is because um, because you already, and she had made statements, you know, that she, this baby's going to know it's loved. I said, you're already thinking about this child. You're already, you know, and I know that you're, you're getting pressure to, to abort your, she began to weep. Wouldn't be the last time that she weeped in my presence, but she, she began to weep. And, and um, you know, and I'm thinking, uh-oh. What have I done now? She's probably going to report me to the school. I'm probably jobless, you know. And so she began to weep. And then she, she said to me, she said, you know, that the father told her that she's a horrible mom that morning. And I said to her, I said, don't you pay any mind. God likes the way you're thinking about your baby. And then the last day to work with her, and she got signed out, and I was going to go somewhere else. And that last day, I pulled her off to the side before she left, and she was she had gotten sick. And she worked about a half a day, and and I and uh, she was leaving. She said goodbye, and I said, "Can I, can can I talk to you for a moment?" And I pulled her off into another room, and I said to her, I called her by name, I said, "I'd like to before you go, I'd like to just pray for you and pray for this baby. Would that be okay?" And she said, "Yeah." And so I placed my hand on her shoulder and I began to pray for this baby. I didn't get but three or four words out. God, you know this this mom and you know this baby as it's being formed. And I, I just want to ask you to bless them. Make him healthy. And she began to weep so badly that she had to go. And I just said, oh, amen. It was a short prayer. And she went off to, back to her school and I didn't hear anything. Well, guess what? Guess who I'm working with? Started Thursday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, how's that baby doing? You had him, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I knew she had him. She obviously wasn't pregnant. Oh, what's his name? I think she told me. I'm horrible with names. I think she said his name is Chance. And uh, she said, you want to see pictures? I said, oh, Yeah. Yeah, so she's showing me pictures. And then on Friday, so I worked with her two days. Um, and then on Friday, um, I come in and I said, how's that baby doing? I said, I told you, uh, I told you I was, I was right, wasn't I? She said, yeah, you're right. And I asked her, you know, about the dad, you know, is he, did he come around? Because I told her he would come around. She said, well, he did, but I'm no longer with him. He's out of the scene. I, I'm thinking, I didn't say this, but I'm thinking, good. I said, how's that baby coming? And she, she smiled and she said, you know, when I get home from work and I see his face and, and, and watch her face and she just lit up. She said, and I see his face and he gets this big smile, so happy that I'm there. And here's a, here's a human being who, who is has low self-esteem, but oh, the baby has made a change in her life. She'll never be the same. And so that was in the morning. And then in the, in the afternoon, I'm getting ready to leave. I said, so you're going to see that smile. And all of a sudden she went from a grumpy looking face to this big, 
I mean, she just kind of beams and said, oh, yeah. And I said, and you are a good mom. I was right, right? And she said, yeah, even my dad says I'm a better mom than he thought I would be. Sowing seeds, getting the heart to a place. Maybe one of you will see her one day and talk about her and chance and, and the grocery. I don't know, and sow some more seeds. And then one day when that heart is right and the word comes out and she just knows and finds herself under conviction, we bear fruit and we do it. That's why he says in patience, can I get an amen? Because we're busy getting hearts ready to receive the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Bearing fruit. You know what's going to run through my mind is chance. God, what are you doing with this baby? You put me in this intersection on purpose and I know it's your handiwork. But oh, I was praying I'm thinking, Lord, I've got, I've got the soul of a human being in my hands at stake here. And I'm begging God, please, God, please don't let me say the wrong thing. Don't let me come off in a way that doesn't help you reach her and save this child. Now she's even better for it. And she'd be the first to tell you. Is she going to church? No. But God is the sower. I would share with you that you and I, that Jesus, he understood it when he shared this parable, that there is the reality that we have to work within, that we are commissioned and it is our profession to be sowers along with him, but never stop sowing just because they aren't receiving. And don't you love it that God doesn't stop? How long did it take for him to reach you? How many times were seed planted in your life by people or things? And God was patiently waiting. It's his kindness that leads us to repentance, says the Bible. Being ever seeing but never perceiving. I want to close with this. Ever listening but never hearing or understanding. Um, this term was around in the Old Testament. You remember Isaiah? He went in as a priest and he peeked into the temple. And he was looking in where he wasn't supposed. He was committing a sin. Just peeking in where he wasn't supposed to peek in. As a, as a priest, he knew better. When he peeked in, he looked and he saw God. Imagine that. And there, there, God was filling the temple and the robe filled the place. And there were seraphims and cherubs and there was, there was, um, and they were flying around. Some with six wings, some with less. And they were singing and praising God. And they were singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And, and as he's peeking in, he whispers to himself, I got sin in my life. Whoa, it's me. And the angels, by God's command, came over with a coal and put it on his lips because he said, I'm a man of unclean lips. And out of that process, brothers and sisters, out of that process, he, he, he's there and he listens to what God has to say. And God puts the call in his life like he's put the call in our lives to be sowers of the seed. And, and God says, and I'm going to read it to you. I think I put it, I put it up, didn't I, Tim? Did I add it to the power? I did. And God said this, and I heard, Isaiah wrote, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And then I said, here I am, send me. And he said, go and say to this people, keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull and their ears heavy and blind their eyes 
oh, my battery's about to go dead, and blind their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and be healed. And I would say to you, just sow the word. Just sow the word. And the rest is up to them and God. Just sow the word. Just keep sowing. And that comes in so many forms. You don't need me to preach that. My, my battery. Look, 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 look. We made it 15%. It's time to quit. Brothers and sisters, I, I know the feeling. Sometimes you feel like, man. In fact, I've heard board members say this to me in board meetings. Not, not, not here, but in other churches. I've had board members actually say, yeah, we tried that before. Nothing we ever do ever produces. Because we're, we're, we somehow think we're in control. Just, just sow the, sow the word. The rest is up to them. Free moral agency. We get to choose or not choose God. But God doesn't quit on them. Isn't that cool? Isn't that so cool? He doesn't quit sowing. He doesn't quit until they draw their last breath. From the time they get their first breath to their last breath, he's always trying to reach them. And so should we. And just because it doesn't turn out the way your mind's eyes see, well, we just haven't perceived enough. It took some questions like, Tim here just to bring this message, you know, it was a good message, at least to me, God is speaking to me, glad you asked it, aren't you Tim, did I answer it, okay, can I pray for you, Father, I sense your spirit working in this place in double time, I know that the enemy wouldn't have it, that There'll be those who, whose hearts so desire to please you that they, they stop and they pause and they look at, well, how am I measuring up? And Lord, um, I, I pray for them because I'm, I'm one of them. And just, just help them to see the steps along the way. They kind of like what you've done with me in this, this testimony that I've even shared today, that you're, 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 you're bearing fruit. And I, I have to, to just depend on you, and I have to allow it to them. And we're just, we're just trying to make the mix, the fertilizing mix of their heart, right, to receive your word, that it would be received with a good heart that holds on to your word. And their lives are changed forever. But I pray, Father, that you help us to not grow weary in well-doing, to remember, Lord, that as we sow the seeds, you, you told us in advance in this parable that, that, that there are going to be those in our life. And yet at the same time, there's fruit. There really is. Use my people, Lord. Use your people, your children. These, these are good people. Season their conversations Condition their eyes to see what you see in people. Help them to hear. To hear others. Just help them, Lord. And encourage them. And then help us all to leave the results with you and those that we've sown seeds. To be patient. Patience is not easy. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. May God cause his face, oh, to be so, so before you in such a way you see him well. May you sense his presence in each moment and every breath that you take throughout this week. And that God may bring us back together, should he tarry that long, that we can celebrate him once again together in such a glorious fashion. Go 
and God bless you.